March 6, 1957, a new dawn of hope reached this nation through the Declaration of Freedom, Justice and Independence to all Ghanaians of then, now and the future. A beginning of progress, peace and unity. Ghana became the nation that would raise her own leaders and her people in charge of their own destiny, a sight what jubilating forevermore. Today, we live as fulfillments to the visions and dreams of many women and men who contributed to the independence we inherit graciously. I wonder how the future will remember us now. Dear Ghana, as much joy as you bring to me, you also birth worry. I worry about the path we are on as a nation. Truly, where are we heading? We are consistently challenging our neighbors, speaking roughly without hesitation to harm and divide. We celebrate those who take advantage of our vulnerability and accept conditions of survival per administration. We complain without solution and we wait and wait and wait, not recognizing that we are our own heroes and heroines that we have all been yearning for. I am proud to be Ghanaian and I want my country to progress and so does many young voices in Ghana and in this documentary. This is me doing my part. This is our wake up call. We have silently been protesting for years by withholding certain rights and freedom but nothing has changed and the youth voices are still being chastised. So I ask you all again on this path that we embark, willingly or not, as a nation and a generation. Will history remember us as the problem or the solution? Do we want the future of Ghana to focus on surviving from our arrogance or living through us? Letter to All Media. I write this letter in hopes that it may excite a conversation in our country, a conversation that has been long awaited to happen. I have therefore taken it upon myself to not wait for others, but to be the single collective voice we need in our country today. As the presidential elections approach, I hope we citizens may be able to look beyond what we have been fooled by for years and start standing for what we deserve as a nation. The truth. Dear Ghana, we do not need a government that is focused on impressing the world. We need a government that is transparent. We need a government that works for the people a government that engages her people in most problem-solving processes. We do not need to prove anything to the world but to elect proper leaders and place them in the right position. They are not to steal, kill, nor take away specific rights, rather to be selfless and humble leaders. Once we get on board with that, the world will catch up and the world will be impressed. I've come to realize that the youth has a very complicated relationship with our leaders and politics in general. Um, I believe that we all have opinions, especially the youth, and it's difficult for our opinions and our views to come across to the leaders of this nation. There have been times when we have voiced our opinions before. But it seems like it only goes as far as social media. And the object of this, of this documentary is to make sure that our leaders or the people in charge see and understand our views. Well, currently, the unemployment situation is very, very, very alarming. 
and realize the case, the youth are complaining and the government and the economy per se is not helping in making, creating job avenues for the youth to engage themselves in. And mostly it doesn't help as a youth trying to get yourself or your feet on the ground to at least do something for yourself. It's not helping as well. When it comes to activism, one, one big thing is that we are frightened <laughs> about activism because we look at it as something that does not bring out positive outcomes. I think about Ghana politics or politics in Ghana Presently, it's very discouraging because it just seems like corruption is a big thing and everyone is just corrupt. But then when I think about politics in Ghana in the future, I'm very much hopeful because I see a lot of youth like me who are determined to make a difference, who are determined to do better and be better than our predecessors. And I'm just very, very encouraged that in the next 10 years or beyond, Ghana, politics in Ghana would be very, very much different. Education is one of the essential elements needed to thrust a nation forward. Statistically speaking, the literacy rate of Ghana has increased by 21.1%. This means there has been an outstanding increase in our literacy rate when comparing the years 2000 and 2018. What does this mean in regards to shaping the present and future of our nation, especially while we watch our future leaders being influenced by the reality of choosing the political and social ideologies for reasons of survival? Our hope is that biased political literacy is eradicated from our nation. We are more than followers. We are leaders. We choose to avoid conversations that do not incite progress but divisions in our nation. The rhetorical question my fellow Ghanaian youth must ask themselves is what does our increase in literacy rate reflect compared to the progress of our nation? I think the hard truth is that most of the people that join these political parties or political front wings just want employment in the future because it's the hard truth that most of the students join because they want to get national service placements and also to work with the machine of government sometime, which I don't think is the right way to go. Personally, two reasons. I don't think that aligning yourself publicly with the political party is wrong. Secondly, I believe that publicly aligning yourself with the political party comes with a lot of benefits. They help you to grow politically. They help you to move your agenda and stuff like that. That's why we have people and politicians in this school and various campuses running on the ticket of various or the various students' political wings we have. Because if you're a member of, for example, the Tertiary Confederacy or the New Patriotic Party, maybe they may help you in funds or whatever way to for you to push agenda for, to become maybe SRC president or faculty president, department head, and stuff like that. I think, yeah, we've had a lot, a lot of instances in the, in the past where people have been publicly and personally harmed because of they being aligning themselves with various political groups on this campus. It's always been a clash between political groups and even student wings a lot of times on our, on our campuses, even in the national politics. So there's a possibility of that. And we, we know the instances of such cases. So I don't think it's far reaching to say that you may not be harmed. You will be harmed if you don't take the necessary steps and the necessary care. Now, come to the previous government and this current government. I don't know what, or I don't know where we get the statistics from, so I wouldn't like to go into it. But I think this government, this current government, has made a good attempt with the free education. However, it does not impress me. The only reason why I'm saying it does not impress me is because I kind of think that at the end of the day, in the next four years, we are going to have a lot of young men, eligible young men in this country, who will be able to read and write, but cannot do anything to help them. For you to be respected, let the youth understand that after university or after any level of education, the government necessarily do not need to employ you. What you can do to help this government is to be innovative by coming out with something. 
to help yourself and this country. We speak of freedom and the privileges of peace frequently, but do we actually mean stipulated freedom? The fear that our political leaders condone and society imposes on us in order to keep us silent, forcing us to tolerate the illegal and very consequential actions that does not affect them, but us, the people. Where is the freedom to exercise our rights and the privilege to voice out if we have restrictions? not from our law, but from our political leaders in society. At this point, who is beneath and above the law? Who does the law protect? A reason to demand more may either get us harmed, threatened, or even worse, killed. If my memory saves me right, sometime back on Twitter, Nanaba Namwa, the journalist, tweeted that as a people, we don't have that we don't put much pressure on our leaders for them to account to us the, the things that they promised to do. If, for example, a president, President A should go to the Eastern region and should be talking about what President B didn't do in the past, I don't think there's a way for it to go. So I think politicians should face the reality on the, on the ground. If you said they're going to do A, B, C, D, come and do A, B, C, D, and don't come and be telling us what President B didn't do and what he did and what's not. We are not interested in that. And that aside, you come to the polls or you come to us citizens to come and campaign to us with promises. And I think we give you the mandate to lead us because we believe that you will be able to do it. So therefore, why then do you come later on into power and then you are not able to fulfill them for various reasons, be it personal or whatever the case may be? You do your feasibility studies before you think that you can occupy that such a position. Personally, I think that there's no drive for the youth in politics these days in our country because people, for the fear, two reasons, I think. For the fear of their lives and their families, people don't want to involve themselves in politics. Secondly, generally, the youth currently are not interested in the politics because we are in a technological age where people know the essence of literacy. And if I am going to school, I've learned all these, all these lessons in social studies, and I realize that my nation should be far ahead of where it is today compared to other nations that gain independence around the same time that we gain ours, then I'll be obviously disappointed in the space of development of my country. Aside that, you look at the fact that our politicians are always letting us down. If, as a country, we have various basic needs to attend to potable water, access to electricity, and accessible roads to various towns and, uh, and, and villages in our country, and the priority for nations to build some enormous building, which I don't think personally is the interest of the country, then obviously you won't find young, brilliant, intelligent, literates interested in politics. Because people feel that Ghana, you know, will be any you. So, so I believe that we have to move the paradigm, we have to shift the paradigm such that if our leaders want the youth to believe in politics, or want us to believe that the politicians are able to do it, then they should prove to us as people that day in and day out they will fulfill their promises that they'll be a better than us sometime. If we are creating jobs, we have the quality of education, the quality of the sustenance of life, the quality of food, water, and whatnot, then why not? You get people trooping in, being interested in politics, not for, the, for their personal gains, but for the interest of the nation. That's how I come, that's what I believe when it comes to the youth not being interested in politics at a very tender age. You look at the Ghanaian, the traditional Ghanaian system, there's little or no room for um, involvement from the youth or the children in the house. So when there's, there's an issue happening in the country in, at home, when there's an issue happening at home and then ad, people, there's advice needed, parents will overlook their child and then they'll, they'll go straight to an elderly person to ask for advice. Because it is believed that every elderly person in the country is wise or is mature enough to make right decisions. But as a child, you have you do not have the capacity or the maturity to make decisions. And I think this has found a way into 
to affect our politics and how we we um, our political systems because you look at the political circle, you look at the political game, and then you realize that even though the youth are the core of most of these political parties, when they got, they come into power and they are the government, they do not take the views and opinions of the youth into consideration. Usually, when they go to everything that happens concerning the countries about parliaments, ministers, parliaments, ministers, DCs, and all, and then the youth are just neglected. So. The only, the only remember the youth when it's time for elections, then you see these political parties mobilizing the youth, giving them t-shirts, giving them party branded caps, souvenirs, and giving them free food, carrying them to political um, political rallies and all, just to make them vote. And when they get into power, they neglect us. And I think this is, this is having a, this is becoming a problem in our political system because most of the youth are realizing this and then they are losing interest in Ghanaian politics. Most of them have decided to vote, and I'm, I'll be like I'll say I'm, a, I'm an example. I don't vote anymore because I feel the system is is one way. We need change in the country. We need change in the system. When I'm talking about change, I'm not talking about this party going for this party to come. I'm talking about everything changing about the political system. You take ninety percent, or <clears throat> you take the politicians in Ghana, and then you realize that ninety or eighty percent of them are way way old to be in politics. Meanwhile, most of the de decisions they make um, boil down to us. It comes down to affect the youth. Meanwhile, the youth don't have a say in politics. We don't have much say in politics, even though when it's time for election, the youth go in queue and all. But when it is time for decision making, the youth are not considered. They always think of, most of the politicians think of themselves. And I think it's really bad because most Ghanaian youth have lost interest in Ghanaian politics. They are so, me, the person just say, um, economy is here. You see, uh, economy, uh, why are they talking about this year? And why are they talking? Crack, 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 crack. You're in Tosi. You're in Yamano, so I feel the two and you're too. We're safe from Abruzzi. Ukwa Yatum, Ochinichi Yatum, Ochinichi Yatum. And I send you a ton of money. You're going to talk to me. Yentu mi nto because baby how can you atu sauce at yourself fuck a crown to own ya ni amanu so yento into ya tu ani ya tu wakeke in the holiday pass your market economy ni mwaye 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 seke ni krum se se no wa o ni pa unu no titi biya unu obesi no se se una na aye bibi ya waho because oba a phone oba ma o stories e ya umetu yento si oh I say market huma di ya mwaye buano ani ebe so buaya ebe shed ebe ye eh because o boy ye na chese se na mi ken o tumi ye ye nyama na bibi sisi na kwanso a de e betumi aboa no sia nyama mo aye di ama ye 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 hu ano chese nyama we face na ye fo pa by sesia de ya ye hu ano wo koto nso andro no nso do so wo koto anche ne si wa na ni nyina ye na ni na ni na ese ese sesia me sia ye to no ni sesia ye nya ni sa ama sesia de de bia ye di sika she mu sika no nso ye ko fa de bia sika no nso ye di ma ye se e be nya sika ni bi na ye di account di afa ni ama ye nya bi sika no nso ye twen ye twen sesia de gana de mu aye di ama ye people who belong to the npp will find it easier to gain employment the same with the ndc or if there's any other party in power People who belong to that party have it easier gaining employment than those who do not have that opportunity. In my eyes, it doesn't seem like the economy is thriving because we are in so much debt. We we export more than we I mean, no, we import more than we export. We are spending more more money than we have. We borrow way too much as a country. Like I do believe that no country can be self-sufficient but we need to be at least for the most part more independent than dependent on other like you know countries for things because for example um there are certain things that can be grown or made in ghana that would benefit you know the the economy a lot and would also open up more job opportunities for you know for people when it comes to entrepreneur opportunities i think um entrepreneurship is the way forward i think in the last few years like three years i have actively seen 
um, a rise in entrepreneurship. People are making and selling their own things. And and that's not only in Ghana. That, I believe, is everywhere around the world, especially in America. And that actually helps the economy grow. But if um, the government isn't allowing or helping people, you know, um, or encouraging people to start their own businesses and to pursue op entrepreneurship, people are not going to want to do it. I can testify that we are all in bondage of our very own doings. Both the government and the people are at fault. We must understand that a country does not become great without correcting simple problems, nor can it become progressive without the knowledge to assist us to identify correctly the wrong and apply the right procedure to reach a permanent solution. We must start working and waste not a second more. We must come together to acquire the essential skills that will give us a motherland that is habitable for all, a country that works for us as much as we work for her. I say all this not to tarnish the image of my country. I say this because of the love I have for my nation, the potential I see as possessed to become the nation Dr. Kwame Nkrumah and the Big Sis fought for, which is still very possible. We can be the great nation we're all dreaming of, the nation of opportunities, the nation that will raise future world leaders, the nation that will be known as Africa's Black Star, the hub for unity and success of our continent. I believe that if we tap into the mindset of eagerness to understand how our governments must work and play the part as citizens and leaders of this nation, seriousness will arise and so will success. For years now, people have been disappointed, people have been aggrieved by the government as a whole. When I say the government as a whole, I don't mean a specific political party, but in general. And I think that there's a time coming, very, very soon, that things will change. Uh, people, old people are going into retirement now. There are new leaders who are coming soon. And I think they have a different view of how politics should be in this country that the true meaning of democracy will be lived on, that people will be employed not because of who they know, but because of their abilities. People will be able to profess their affiliations without the fear of being ostracized by communities. If we are to make this free education thing a free technical education, I think that in the next four years we are going to have most young men out there who we can call to do Messing job for us, small carpentry job for us, or they'll be able to op open small fitting shop, small uh, uh, um, carpentry shops, doing something to help themselves and helping this country. I think it's about time we take things into our hands. The government is doing this part, but most of that depend, depend on us. So we should come into, at least if you are two or three people, you can come together create something for yourself because if you think about depending on this government or this economy to at least make your life better i think it's not going to work we don't have parents that would you know talk children through the importance of politics right from the tender age we have families where day in day out they are they are, fam they are family members discuss politics and the importance of governance and helping the nation develop with their children right from the scratch that spirit of nationality is imbibed in the citizen or the students to make sure that one day he will help his country. And I believe a couple of my friends and myself have that vision that one day we'll have a better Ghana. I believe, like, with the right people in power, with the right allocation of resources, with the right brains put together, in the next 10 years, we should be at a better place and we will be at a better place. I mean, let's say we all come together and make um, a, you know, a unified decision that we want this to be changed. And some of the youth are called and given stuff, money and stuff. Obviously their mind will change. So there's not gonna be unity. So if we learn to stand on our ground, if we learn to believe in the things we believe in and not be skeptical about you know the things we believe in i think we'll go further with so many things mm. yeah because um, i think 
um, when we all come together, we're able to move better than a deviated country. It's always a distraction for, you know, movement, for pro progression, for, you know, development. Dr. Kwame Nkrumah said, Ghana, your beloved country, is free forever. He said, your beloved country, yours and mine. Therefore, we must see it as our responsibility to take care of her. He spoke into the future. He spoke into us. So let's take heed to his calling and let's be as one. Because together, we are the voice. We are the voice. We are the voice.